Hi everyone and welcome to a special documentary on Molly Taylor, a young Australian with a dream of winning the World Rally Championship, arguably one of the toughest forms of motorsport. Molly comes from a successful rally family, but that hasn't automatically opened doors for her. An inspirational young woman, Molly is fast making a name for herself in this typically male-dominated pursuit. This is the story of her quest to make it to the top in the WRC. Without a doubt, I think she's probably worked harder than anybody I know to go rallying over the last couple of years. Yeah, your focus has to be 100% on it, and I see that quality in Molly. She lives, eats, breathes rallying. The desire to succeed in her goals, and you know, nothing will stand in the way. Been in control. <laughs> Far from being a passing fad, Molly has been surrounded by two of the greatest names in Australian rally. Neil Bates is a four-time Australian Rally Champion. He is a lifelong family friend and has become Molly's mentor, helping to guide and hone her driving skills. Coral Taylor is one of the most successful women in Australian motorsport. Not only has she been the vital member of Neil's Four Crowns, the combination of Bates and Taylor has been synonymous in rallying for the past 18 years. Together, they form the base that any aspiring driver would wish for. Family, experience, honesty. Always grown up around motorsport and it's always been a part of my life, but um, there was never that pressure to get involved and you know, I think it would have been a lot easier if I, if I didn't. Molly, as a, a youngster, was incredibly into horses, but in her endeavour in horses, she had the, exactly the same focus. So, yeah, I'd say Molly is a very, very focused person and uh, probably gets that from her mother. <laughs> you know, it's really difficult being Molly's mother. It, it was really difficult being the mother of um, someone who was a three-day eventer and racing through the cross-country course on a horse. In some ways, when she hopped into a rally car, you sort of felt that there was a little bit more protection around her. But you never stopped worrying. You know, it was never enough just to go out and enjoy it. You know, you had to enjoy it and then you had to get better and then you had to compete. I think that moment came um, when we were on our way home from a horse event in Canberra and she'd done really badly. And, and Molly doesn't like to lose, she's very competitive, she likes to win. And I said to her, the time has come where you've got to choose one or the other. You, you can't do both and do them well. Now, at that point, I would have bet my life on her choosing horses over cars because the horses had been the focus of her complete life. But it wasn't. She chose cars and sold her horse and sold her float and that was what gave her the budget to buy her first really proper rally car. Oh yes, yes, there were many, many nights spent in the garage and um, she had no idea, you know, she was working, working on horses, but um, then when she got a rally car, um, she sort of made it very clear that she wanted to be able to uh, change the clutch, pull the engine out, she wanted to know everything there was to know about the car. I'm very lucky to have encouraging parents and I think there definitely was that sense of nervousness I guess when when they know you know I'm out on the stage and particularly you know mum if we were doing the same rallies and they would go through a stage and and there'll be a you know slippery bit or a dangerous section and and mum would be sitting there thinking oh gosh I know we got through that but did Molly have that bit noted and you know, is she going to get through it all right. In her early rallies when I had an opportunity to go and 
spectate, I would always find an excuse to wait at the service park because it was actually easier to be there and see her drive in, not have to go and stand on the side of the road and, and wait and make sure that she's come past safely. You know, it was always a going joke for my mum to be referred to as Molly's mum, not me be referred to as Coral's daughter. So that, you know, that's, that's always the underlying joke that we're you know, really just working to change that all the time. <laughs> but um, I mean, for sure, you'll, you'll have people that think you're there because of, you know, your contacts. And definitely, if I can benefit from having their experience, you know, I'll take as much of that as I can. But it's still, you know, you're out there doing your own thing and when you're on the stage, you're, you know, it's you and the co-driver, it's not anyone else. So it's still, you still have to do it at the end of the day. Like my kids, they, they know a lot of it through watching it, being around it, but uh, to actually do it, I think that speeds the process up enormously. And, you know, Molly's, uh, growth in the sport has obviously been very quick. Like I remember my first ARC round and it was just like I died and gone to heaven and everything was happening and you know you were competing against all the people you'd watched on telly and and then from there going to the UK and doing it all again it's just you know every, every year's just been a big I guess dive in the deep end every year just stepping up and throwing yourself in amongst it.